Hi everybody, this is James George and this is Creative Beacon. Uh, this week I've got kind of a, a cool, uh, it's sort of a tutorial slash feature review uh, for Photoshop and the Creative Suite. Um, this this week I found something kind of cool and it's a, I think it's a newer feature that is with uh, Photoshop CC. And so you can see from here I've got a design that's basically two layers. It's real simple just for uh, just for explanation purposes. And the, uh, I've got a background layer with a gradient overlay and I have text with a drop shadow. And so it's just a basic thing. And what's cool is uh, Photoshop decided to uh, try to take your Photoshop layers and convert them to CSS styles for the web. And so to do that, uh, basically it's on a layer per layer basis. And so let's take the type layer. You just go to layer copy CSS and then if uh, I'll hop over to the text styles here and so it creates a class of beacon whatever the text is I guess and then it applies layer styles so I guess it tells you the font size the font family and then takes the color, which the color was sort of an off-white. And so you can see uh, it's not all 255. It's not a pure white. So, uh, you know, it gives you the values for those. The line height of the type, the text alignment. And it, it uh, converts the text shadow that you created into values with uh, how far uh, over and down that the uh, shadows are and how large they are and what color they are. The position uh, in the Z index. And so when you do the same for your background layer, you get this information. See what it does is it takes the name of the layer itself like this is beacon this is layer space zero and so it gave it uh, the name of beacon and the uh, the class of layer underscore zero I think this is a cool feature but all in all I I, I was kinda disappointed by the background what I was hoping for was I created a gradient overlay for the background and it created it as an image. And what I was hoping for is that it would somehow create the actual like um, vendor prefix gradients with all the, you know, I guess that was wishful thinking, but I was hoping it would automatically convert those. I mean, there are uh, conversion uh, sites out there where you can put in a, a gradient value and get the whole list, the whole breakdown of the uh, CSS to create those, uh, CSS3 styles to create those gradients in all browsers. Going back really, you know, as far as possible. But with this one, Photoshop just doesn't isn't as advanced. It just isn't as advanced enough to do that because it creates an image. And so I guess it's going to take this background, this gradient background, and hope to apply it. And so that my only problem with that, well, just the fact it's not pure CSS, is the fact that you're relying on an image. What if your gradient was at an angle? You know, yeah, this could repeat forever horizontal, 
and it would look okay because it would just be the same. But I did a a, a vertical uh, gradient. If I did horizontal or if I did at an angle, when this repeated, it's not going to be seamless. You're going to see the seam right here every time it repeats. And so, you know, like uh, this whole document is 600 pixels wide by 450. Well, if I'm doing a, a background image for a wide display for your website, you know, that's typically 14 to 1600 pixels, and then a retina display, it could be double that. And so, that's my only problem with that, is if you're going to create a pattern or something, or create a, C a CSS gradient, you know, that will go on forever. And you'll never see a seam, but creating it from an image, you're going to see seams, and it's not going to look that good. So I'm a little disappointed, but... You know, this is their first attempt at integrating this feature. What I think that Adobe could do is they could look at some of these sites that can take the RGB values of uh, the colors that make up the gradient from start to finish and convert them just like those sites do. They should be able to integrate that feature into Photoshop. It may bloat Photoshop a little bit in size, but I think it would be cool. If they're going to do this, they need to do it all the way. It doesn't need to be a half CSS. But I do like the attempt because one thing that you could do with this and it would be useful is, you know, sometimes when you're creating a, a, a drop shadow or a text shadow in CSS, you kind of have to guess at the values the, and test it in the browser and see, well, what is, does this look good? Does it not look good? Okay, let me go back and adjust it. Let's make this, you know, 3.1 pixels by, you know, and you could do this complete, completely visually in a, on a visual basis, then copy the CSS and paste it over, and then you can, I would still test it just to make sure, but I think you would have a much more accurate look, and and you it could be exactly what you're going for, and I think you may be happier with it. it something useful that you could you could use this for. Otherwise, um, you know, without going all the way with CSS3, I I kind of think that this isn't as useful as it could be. But it's a good start. Um, I encourage you to check out, you know, try different things, try different layer styles, and see what CSS will come up to try to create those. And, you know, some it will, some it won't. Like beveled text, I tried to do a beveled text effect, and that didn't work. It didn't even pick it up. So, you know, tr try it out, check it out. It's a cool feature that's in the new uh, version of Photoshop. And again, it's under uh, the Layers menu, Copy CSS, whatever layer you're on. I don't think it will do them both automatically. Nope, see it's grayed out. So you have to do it one layer at a time. So that's another thing that you have to consider. But I thought you guys might think this is something cool. You should go and check it out and try it out for yourself. Hope you enjoyed this week's video. And... I'm James George, and this is Creative Beacon.